goodness, I can't believe it. Week nine, I've been doing this. Can't this is madness itself. Um, so yeah, this is, I've been going through and thinking, wow, I've done quite a few different dishes now. This is looking really quite exciting, really interesting. So um, thank you very much. Um, I just need to do one more thing, Debbie. Can you just turn that on? <laughs> Press the record button on the other camera. Um, yeah, it helps if I record this, otherwise I'm gonna go on YouTube. Yeah, press that one. There you go, it's happening. Fantastic. Anyway, sorry about that. So yeah, thank you very much again for joining me for what is week number nine. Uh, the live cooking. I hope you guys are still coping well in this time. Um, so this week I thought it'd be quite interesting to use up um, uh, another dish kind of inspired by the book I recommended last week, which was um, Japan the World Vegetarian by Blake or Hashimoto. Um, and I thought it was really lovely, she did like a real wonderful recipe with like a blend of ingredients and a real fusion of sort of Italian um, and Japanese cuisine. So we're going to sort of make a pesto, but not made in sort of the normal way using the standard ingredients, so we're going to use a red miso instead, obviously for example, parmesan. Um, well I thought this was really cool, obviously it, it's, it's a vegetarian cookbook, but obviously I'm using squid and bacon and, and so on like that because um, I like it meaty, um, so that's what we're, we're going to go today. Um, just wanted to say again about my YouTube channel, please if you haven't already give it a subscribe, show your friends, tell them about it. Uh, I've been uploading every week and I will continue to do so. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was, you guys have probably seen that I've been posting a little bit about the Burnt Chef Project. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic charity that uh, is trying to raise awareness of the mental health um, within, within the hospitality sector. So please, if you get a chance, head over to uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, go to the website, The Burnt Chef Project. They're doing some incredible little wristbands. They're doing Sharpie pens, they're doing knives, aprons, everything. So go over there, have a little look. You know, you just put some um, little... Uh, discount codes if you spend over £7.50 and so on. Please just, just go over there and give it a like. It's a really, really incredible charity. Um, and obviously it means quite a lot, to, a lot to me. I was very fortunate enough to be used in, in his recipe book that he just put like a, an, an e-recipe book out, an electronic one. And it, it was really humbling to be able to be involved in that, especially in sort of the early stages of the project. Um, so definitely go over there, Burnt Chef Project, give it a like. So we're gonna go now. Um, as per usual, throw me questions, I'll answer as best I can, um, you know, fill the time as best, best we can, that'd be great. So, we'll get cracking. Uh, what we're gonna do first is, if you chuck on a pan of water and salt in there, that's gonna be for the uh, spinach in a minute. If you haven't done already, uh, now would be a good time to sort of chop your, your, your ingredients. So, I've just got the diced peppers, just dice them easily. I've done the broccoli florets and then I've taken the stalk which I've peeled and just diced. I'm just doing a little pak choy as a side dish just for us. Um, I said squid on the recipe, I'm just using a little mix of seafood mix with mussels and prawns and squid. Just because I had it, had it about, I thought it would be nice to use. Um, and so on. So what we'll do, we'll go through um, kind of the, what we've got around. So if you haven't sort of got it weighed out already, you're going to need 200 grams of spinach. Gonna need some 25 grams of cashew nuts, which in a minute we're gonna put in a little frying pan and toast off. Okay, but we can get that a little frying pan on now if you so desire. You get that warming, we can toast these nuts off in there. Then we're gonna need uh, 25 grams of red miso paste. I really hope you managed to get it. If you've got the white miso paste, it's absolutely fine. We uh, will give it a go. Uh, and then in the, here I've got uh, olive oil and sesame oil. I've got some chili, I've got some nice little ones. I'm going to keep the seeds in to add a bit of kick. And then I've got um, ginger diced garlic and mirin. I didn't uh, put it in a separate container. I've got mirin on. Oh, right, mix them together. But it doesn't matter because those ingredients are all going to blend together as well. And then for later, we're going to need the bacon, the squid tubes, which you can just slice. The bacon I've just cut sort of roughly, sort of, sort of size. I'm using uh, soba noodles. This time, I thought about making my own uh, ramen noodles, uh, but I don't think they really suit so with soba noodles. If you're using udon, it's absolutely fine. If you're using any other kind, if you're using a 
I mean, if you really wanted to, if it's all you had, you could use um, you know, those little packet ramens that you get, like those little mini ones with the spices inside. You could just use the noodles out of that, that would work well. So, we'll put a frying pan on first. Um, just a small one, you don't need those. We're just gonna put the cashew nuts in there and lightly toast them off, okay? And then, uh, what you also want is a bowl of cold water in a minute. And the reason what we're gonna do is to make this pesto, we're gonna blanch or just throw the spinach into boiling water just for 15, 20, 30 seconds. It's not gonna be very long. And we're just gonna cook them slightly and then we're gonna put it in the cold water. And the reason we're gonna put it in the cold water is to stop the cooking process. Okay, because green vegetables particularly, when you cook them and um, you cook them for too long, they lose their colour and they go brown. You know, I'm sure a lot of you many times Going around to mum's house for Sunday lunch and she's done the broccoli, it's a bit overcooked. So I'm gonna go a little bit brown. So we're gonna try to do that. And the best way to sort of keep green veg green is to put them into, uh, into ice water, preferably, or, or cold water. As soon as they come out, put them in the cold water and that's what uh, is the best thing for it. What is the reason for toasting the cashew nuts? Um, just to give a nice flavour, you know. You can put them in as they are, but you know, it's just gonna give a lovely, a lovely flavour. I mean, the sesame oil that you use are generally uh, from toasted sesame seeds and it just gives a richer flavour. Plus you get more of the cashew nut flavour out. So they're just in there, I'm just gonna put them in slightly. I haven't put any oil in there, just a dry hot pan uh, with the cashew nuts in there and you'll see already, it's starting to smell lovely. Pan of water, some salted water on already, okay. It's not gonna take that long to get uh, started, okay. And then we're gonna need a frying pan later. Yes, my love. Mads Time says, why are you so awesome? Good jeans. Very good jeans. Yeah? Great chef. <laughs> great, a great chef taught me. And that's all that matters, because he's a, he's a good guy. And uh, yeah. But thank you very much, it's very kind of you. Cool. So, okay, um, if, um, Rachel's asking if the squid is frozen, does it need to be defrosted? Yes, because what will happen is if, when we put it later, we're just going to very quickly fry it in a, sort of a frying pan. If it's not, if it's frozen, what will happen is, is that the moisture that's on the outside will come out and instead of it frying nicely, it will just bleed and it will just make everything boil because the water will come out quickly. Just run it under some cold water. It's not going to take long. If you've got squid tubes that need cutting, get them under cold water. They'll, they'll Five five minutes and they'll be done. Just change the water a couple of times and then that's it. Okay, so Mads is a bit worried they haven't enough cashew nuts. They've got 25 grams, but it doesn't look like a lot. It's not, I mean, you look at mine, that, that, that's not a great deal. It's not a great deal. It's, it's, it's not the main flavour, so that's it's not a problem. So they're just, I'm just lightly toasted them now. I'm not going to do them much more. I'm just going to put them in that pan there. Okay, and they're just to keep nice. And what we can do, just leave that just there. As soon as this water comes to boil, that's what I might do, I'm going to take some water out and that will help. Put too much water in and what happens is it takes too long to heat up. So we're going to go with that. So what we'll have, so just a, just a quick reminder, 25 grams of miso paste. 50 grams of ginger, I've just diced, you can grate it if you want. Clover garlic, sliced. Two tablespoons of mirin. And obviously the 25 grams of cashew nuts. The olive oil and sesame oil blend. And the chili, I've used just three small chilies, but you could just use one chili, it's fine. And that's what, and the, the spinach obviously for the pesto. Hopefully you guys have got the nori and you've got the bonito flakes. because That's gonna give a really nice flavor uh, to later. And that's gonna be really nice. So. That's going to be, I think, going to be a good little thing. You know what they say, a watch kettle never boils. <laughs> Great. So, um, I've also, guys, I've been thinking about next week, um, and I'm going to try, because as you guys have already bought soba noodles, I think next week I'm going to give a try at a Hiroshima-style okonomiyaki. So okonomiyaki, I think, was the first thing we did. Um, we did the Osaka style, which doesn't have noodles, but the Hiroshima style, as I said in my video, contains noodles. And uh, I've only tried it once, uh, but I think it's going to be a really cool little thing. And see what you guys have got noodles already. 
And we could do that, do that. It'd be oishi. It would be oishi, very much so. Very, very much so. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's it. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this one. I think, like I said, I tried it once before and I wasn't completely happy with it, but you know, first time for everything, other things, you know. Today I made scones out of sourdough starter, which was really delicious. Rebecca's asking for you to repeat the quantities, please. Okay, so for the pesto, 200 grams of spinach, 25 grams of cashew nuts, just lightly toasted, uh, 25 grams of red miso paste, 30 mils of olive oil, 30 mils of sesame oil, two tablespoons of mirin, or if you're not using mirin, you can use uh, rice wine, 50 grams of ginger, just diced or grated, one clove of garlic, and one chili. And that's all that we're gonna put in the pesto, okay? Nice and simple. Right. Jimsy Duda says Okonomiyaki is his favorite. I know it is. I know it is. That's why I chose it. Right. Water should be practically boiling now, which mine practically is. So we're going to add the spinach in. Is the water salted? Yes, always. Always, always salty water. Absolutely. What's wrong with putting more flavor in things? Absolutely nothing. Get that delicious flavor in there. Okay. So you're just going to put that down. It's not going to take long. Literally, you're just practically going to wilt the spinach. That's all you're going to do. Okay. As soon as it's wilted, we'll put it straight into the bowl and get it cold. You might, you might find that once you've added this into the bowl, that um, the the water in the bowl has warmed up. So you might have to just pop that into uh, put a bit of fresh cold water on it. That'd be a great idea. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much all I'm going to do there. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to pop that straight into the cold water. Make sure you separate it a bit. And then uh, that all comes out there. Beautiful. And in there, make sure you give it a mix. Now, don't worry about just this saucepan. Just um, get rid of the water and put some fresh salted water. We're going to use this pan for the noodles later. Okay, you're also probably going to need a colander. Um, or a sieve, some description for your noodles, make your life a bit easier for you. Okay, um, if you're anything like us, where the garden is incredibly dry, save this water you put on the garden. When it's cold. Yeah, when it's cold, don't put it now, that'd be horrific. So yeah, so there we go, so that's going to go on there. Fresh water in there, it's obviously salt for the noodles for later. Obviously, depending on what your noodles are using, you, you know, just follow the ingredients and the uh, suggestions on the packet. Some of them just say just rinse under hot water. Uh, I think Jim's did Udo, I was using Udo noodles today, if I'm not mistaken. So, we'll get that fresh water in there, with salt. We'll get that on. And that can be lovely. I'm careful with my salad, I don't want it to overheat. So now, nice big bowl of water and the spinach is practically cold it's not going to be ice cold because obviously I've got no ice if you've got some ice chuck some in I'm going to take it out of the water and I'm just going to give it a squeeze and you'll be surprised there's actually a lot of water in this okay same again with this lot again don't waste this water chuck it on the garden use it to feed your plants earlier you said this was a fusion dish what do you mean by fusion fusion is just a blend of uh cuisines you know you can you know there are, you you'd be surprised in many countries how they've got ingredients ideas or even you know things from uh from other countries you know for example when we did the uh tonkatsu curry you know, I said that the, it was the Portuguese that introduced bread to the Japanese and the Japanese then put, uh, added things to make their panko a lot more exciting um, by adding, they actually put an electric current through it, which is why, that's what I mean by it's a fusion. So everything's a fusion. This is obviously a fusion of sort of Japanese flavors like miso and sesame, but you're doing it in the form of a pesto, which is, is quintessentially Italian. 
So, and that, that's basically just, just like a blend of, of different uh, cuisines. So that's uh, the spinach, you see, I love spinach as an ingredient, but cool, you buy 200 grams, that's what you get. So what I'm gonna do now is I've squeezed it out and I'm just gonna run my knife through it and chop it up a bit. And the reason is to do this is just to make sure it's a little bit easier on the machine, okay? Because if you're using other, you know, you could, you could use water press if you wanted to, you could use rocket, you know, but um, it can sometimes be quite fibrous. And then fibrous things on machines, I don't really like it. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pop that in there. And then in there, I'm gonna add everything else. My mirin, my ginger, my garlic, my chili. Mandy is asking, she's got soba noodles and they're brown rice and wakami. Is that okay? Yeah, why not? Sounds lovely. So that's all the ingredients in there. So again, that's the, the, the spinach that we've uh, squeezed out wash and refresh and squeeze out. 25 grams of total cashew nuts. The red miso paste, 25 grams. 30 grams or mils of sesame oil, 30 mils of olive oil. 50 grams of ginger, grated, whatever you want to do. Diced, is fine. Uh, two tablespoons of mirin, one clove of garlic, and that's that. So now- And how much chili? I did it. The recipe says one. If you've got, depending on how spicy you like it, you can add more. You could do pine nuts, you could do almonds, um, you could do really good posh, you could do macadamia nuts, you could use any nuts you want. You know, you could, you could use different. Uh, you could, this is the great thing about why well, I love this profession is everything can be adapted. You know, you, could, you can use whatever you want, change it to how you want, what you like. If you don't like spinach, use rocket. If you don't like rocket, use watercress. If you don't want that, use basil, use tarragon, use anything you want. So then we're going to get a blend. It looks pretty like that. And you want to blend it for a good minute so it's nice and smooth, okay? Lovely, that's perfect. Put it out of the way. So I'm just gonna take this out. Oh, that's what you should get. Something really lovely, okay? Nice color. It is. You know what, I'm gonna save on washing up. I'm not even gonna take it out of there. I'm just gonna take it all in here and leave it there. It's up to you guys. If you wanna take yours out of the container, I want this nice and blended. Okay, it wants to be nice and smooth. Okay, and that's lovely. And when you look at it, all of it should be nice and nice and blended and look really lovely, which I'm sure it will do. So we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna get ready for the next bit. So what we're gonna do next, I don't think I need this chopping board anymore, so I'm gonna remove that. That cloth can stay on there. Okay. So, what we're gonna do for the next part, we're gonna need a large frying pan, something like that. We're gonna put it on the heat. Come on. Come on. Mandy plus if I says hers isn't as bright as yours. That's fine. I tell you what, what happens. If I was at work making a pesto, I always do the same thing, and that is I would have all the ingredients cold. Because even in the machine, the, even when you're blending it, the speed of the blend of the, of the machine will warm the oil and cooks it again. So it, it does happen, don't you know? It looks green on camera, maybe it's just a green filter I'm using. <laughs> it <laughs> um, does look brighter on camera than it does in real life. Thank goodness, so there you are. So it doesn't look, doesn't look as bright as it looks on there. I mean, it might be because it's just good luck. We'll go on. Anyway, so we're back to the sauce. We're going to get the frying pan on and we're going to get uh, a little bit of oil. We'll put that in there. Faithful oil covered. 
Just put a couple of tablespoons of oil on there. Just to make sure you guys, you've got a pan of water on, salted water ready for your noodles in a minute. Okay. Okay. Once we're nice and hot, what we're going to do, we're going to add the bacon, give that a nice little mix. Then we're going to add the, uh, the vegetables, the peppers and the uh, broccoli. Okay. And that's going to be soigné. And then near the end, when, we're, when the noodles are cooked, we're going to pop the, the, prawn, the squids in there, get it nice and frying, season it up, beautiful. Okay. Then we're going to make it, cook the noodles and so on, but we'll get to that next. So, bacon in next into the frying pan. Get that bad boy sizzling. Okay. I'm vegetarian, so I get to eat like my bacon and fish. Yeah, yeah, they will. It's, uh, you know, you can, you can just put extra vegetables. You can use other vegetables as well. Put bean sprouts in it, add more peppers. Use tofu. Use shiitake mushrooms would be lovely in this. Courgette. You know, just whatever ingredients and vegetables you like, put it in there. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's lovely. I know that when I am um, very, the, the author of the book, Japan, the, the World Vegetarian, so very kindly, we had a very nice conversation over Instagram and I said that I was going to be replicating this uh, a very similar method, a similar recipe that she was doing. And um, she said that when she first did this, it was an anchovy pesto. And I thought that sounded delicious, almost like a gentleman's relish. Um, and I thought that was well, an anchovy butter, I believe. But then she, to make it vegetarian, she used red miso and so on and that. And that's lovely. Is the bacon chopped? Yes. Yeah, chop it how you want. Okay. Now, this is what always happens with bacon. All of this, all the water comes out. And it's really important that it evaporates. You want to make sure you boil that up good and proper um, so it, it gets all that, all that water and things up. Um, it all evaporates because otherwise what you're going to have is just you're not going to find pretty bacon you're just going to have soggy bits of, uh, of mess which is never never as nice don't forget guys you're going to need your nori flakes um, and bonito flakes uh, i'm using um a nori uh seaweed flakes that i use in my okonomiyaki um but if you're using the nori sheets we're just going to rip them up later which is going to be lovely Zita says that your dad's doing a barbecue for them tonight. Yes, I know. He said. <laughs> and uh, Michael O'Donnell went, Cass! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trying to remember our. Uh, is it Epic in a Bun, our, uh, our, our, our old uh, Wow Freeman? And killing the tree, if I'm not mistaken, we did a lot. Those poor, those poor druids. Bless them. Cool, so bacon's cooking up nicely. Water's nearly boiling. Great, noodles have got ready. Okay, by this point the water from the bacon should start to evaporate. Okay, at this point I'm gonna add the peppers. Okay, or whatever other vegetables you're using if you're not using peppers. Anything that remember what we said last week, anything that takes the longest, you wanna get them in. And I know you're probably saying, well, Simon, you put the bacon in, but that doesn't take as long. But the bacon gives flavour and adds salt. And salt is flavour. And so is fat. But it's still delicious. So that's going to get in there. I'm going to get that in there. Lovely. Okay. Get my bowls out. Now, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to warm a kettle. And the reason I'm going to do this is so, I'm going to put a little bit of boiling water in the bowls and that's going to keep the bowls nice and warm. If I ever do a ramen I always do the same thing, warm them up and uh, just makes it a lot nicer. Don't waste the water, put it back in the kettle. Yeah? This time, economical, that's what we've got to be. <laughs> Ecologically friendly. That one too. Right, I love this. It's Bacon is coming around nicely, starting to crisp up. Peppers are starting to soften. So now we're going to add our broccoli. Okay, some of them have got a little bit, need to be a little bit smaller. Uh, Connie obviously didn't prep them right. That's you. I know. That's why I'm going to go myself. <laughs> yeah, 
Did you prep my stuff? Yeah, you'd hate the <laughs> you'd hate the way I chopped it. What's this? What's this you've done? It's like a blind that. woodman. No, I'm that. Man. <laughs> Imagine wanting to know if you chopped the cute little tentacles on the screen. Absolutely, absolutely. There's, I mean, it, it's always luck of the draw who gets them. But they're the best. You know, the squid is really important. You can use it all, really. Um, usually, any that you buy, unless you buy fresh, they're generally already prepared, and inside they've got like um, almost feels like a sheet of plastic, which is uh, like the, the, the spine of it. I forget what it is, the cartilage, and you want to obviously remove that. But generally, frozen ones. But you don't chop the legs in half, do you? You just keep, you just no, chop the legs I, I off. Just, I just chop them off, and uh, and that's it. If I'm not mistaken, usually, so you've got like the top of the. If you imagine like the hand. My hand is the tentacles. You want to cut them from about where the where just underneath where the tentacles begin, and that removes the the horrible bits that are here. So you just keep the nice tentacle pieces. Okay, a warm one today. Didn't you? So your water for your noodles should be boiling. So we're going to chop them in now. How much broccoli they is asking? I used about depending on the size, at least a good large head of broccoli but whatever's uh whatever you've got if you want to use more then use more okay so that's that it's, it's completely up to you um how large are pieces of the mr squiddy uh, as large as you want you know but the, the smaller they are the quicker they will, will cook and that'll be a lot nicer you know you want things done quickly Okay. There we are guys, that's what I've got there, noodles are in, Okay. green pesto, it does, it does look uh, brighter on, uh, on camera, All right, there we go, that's in there, rubbly, right, so now you've got all this uh, stuff in, it's just starting to perhaps colour on the edges of the veg, you're going to put your prawns or squid in, whatever you've got, in they go. With the boiling water in the jugs to get them hot and the reason I'm doing this obviously to keep it hot but because this doesn't have much of a sauce it very quickly cools down in the bowl and that's not never as nice okay so back to back to this gonna get them cooked up flavor starting to come out really nice noodles literally don't take long at all so they're ready to go I'm gonna take them off Put them into uh, in there, strain them off. Now, save on washing up. Put them empty the water from that saucepan. Put the noodles straight back in there. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to put about half of that pesto mix on top. Okay. Nice and simple. What sort of noodles did you uh, use, Katie's asking? I used uh, soba noodles. Okay. Give that a good mix. You can see how lovely and vibrant and green that goes. Oishi. Soft noodles. Huh? <laughs> that was... Um, Answering <laughs> and instead of sober, it's sobs. <laughs> right. I'm gonna dish this out and I'm gonna cook this pak choy up for us. Uh, right so, by now, everything should be nice and cooked, all the squid's done. We can start dishing out now. So, there's the noodles in there, lovely. Okay, then I'm gonna, like I said, waste some water. Maddie says they're the saddest noodles of all time. Oh, come on now, it's not that bad, I'm sure. When you get that green pesto on it, don't matter what they look like, it's what they taste like, man. You just remember that, yeah? You might eat with your eyes, but it never satisfies the belly. Okay. Then.
a bit too much on that one. Just going to give it a short change. So you've only used half of the pesto. Yeah. What would you do with the rest of it? The rest of it, you can you know, make this dish again. Um, you could use it on. Uh, on what, did we, what did we do the other day? We did. Um, we made some bread with it. We made a special called tanzo bread, and uh, we put that in the middle. I mean, and sort of treated it like a like an Italian focaccia kind of bread, and put that inside. And that was that was really nice actually. Okay. Oh, that's been... So then uh, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Is there anything else you could do with it, Simon, the pesto? Um, chicken. Yeah, it'd be quite nice with chicken. Um, you know, you could you could even use it if you're really clever. You use it as part of the ramen. That'd be really nice. How long would it keep in the fridge? Oh, it would it would, it would last at least a, a couple of weeks easily. If you keep it in a container sealed, it would last plenty of time. It, the good thing is, is that because there's nothing in there that's Going to go off anytime soon, it will last a good, good amount of time. So that's why I mean, the recipe that I've, I've got this from is double the amount, and I thought we don't need quite that much just for this, so I'll just make a little less. But it's a lovely recipe. There we are. Um, Maddie wants to clarify that she meant because this. It, she wrote sobs noodles. Oh, you know, like crying. Sobbing noodles. Like yeah. That. Does it? So there we are, guys. We're gonna just now top it, top it off now. So your nori flakes. I'm using the green ones. If you're using the seaweed, I'm just gonna gently sprinkle on the top. Okay, this gives a lovely, rich, umami flavour. Obviously, if you're vegetarian, you're not gonna put the next ingredient on, or the bacon or the uh, squid. But if you are not vegetarian like myself, you can use this. Make it a nice, rich, fishy flavour to an already lovely dish. Boishi. Boishi indeed. So there we are, guys. Family time at Bryce's house. That's my uh, red miso soba dish, uh, influenced by uh, Japan World Vegetarian by Raiko Hashimoto. Uh, thank you again for tuning in, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I think we're gonna go with the Hiroshima style Okonomiyaki for next week. Um, not gonna need anything major for that, really. Uh, soba noodles or any other noodles you wanna use, yes? Maddie's wondering what they do with the nori. Rip it up, sprinkle it on top. Rip it up and do whatever you want. Cut it with scissors, and then you want to sprinkle that on top, and then you beneath the flakes on top. Okay? So, yeah, next week, Hiroshima style Okonomiyaki, and we're going to make that really nice um, and go from there. So, thank you again, guys, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. You guys are, honestly, you're such a good crowd, and I get lots of lovely comments from people before and after the live shows. It really does, it really does really warm my heart that you guys. Uh, get involved in this, you know, and I'm not just doing it just for, just for the fun I'm doing it because I want to do something for you guys and be like, oh, I can do something different with these ingredients, so yeah. Katie so, says, keep the cooking videos coming, she's bored of her own basic recipes. <laughs> very well, I will do my utmost. So yeah, thank you very much guys, take care, and I will see you guys next week, Friday, 5 p.m.